like to call to order, please, the work session agenda on Monday, Monday March 23rd. And uh, following this meeting, there'll be a regular meeting and a special meeting tonight. So we're all around the table. So the first item is the staff will receive a council input regarding topics, venue, timing, participants, and reception, and other ideas for the State of the City event. Council will also have the opportunity to discuss outreach meetings in the community to include potential open houses, taking council meetings on the road. And we have Wynette Reed, our Deputy City Manager, presenting. Wynette? not working okay several themes that um, I identified a lot of the state of the city addresses will uh, focus on new initiatives that are happening at the city future goals challenges opportunities uh, they can showcase primarily economic development or they can weave that into the topic of what new uh, economic development is taking place marketing, branding, videos, and sometimes recognitions of Citizen of the Year. I noticed that the City of Glendale incorporated um, acknowledgement of the Citizen of the Year into uh, their state of the city address. So it really varies on topics. It can be designed any way uh, you would like to see it designed and, and the content. The venues were just as varied, resorts, city halls, hotels, education centers. It was whatever was available and would meet the needs of what the anticipated participa participation would be. Timing of the state of the city addresses, most of what I saw within the state of Arizona was around February, March, April time. Did notice that uh, Buckeye and I believe Chandler was the other one that held it a little later in the year. But it, even out of state, a lot of the state of the city addresses when looking to Colorado, Illinois, a variety of places most of the time they were held earlier in the year but I did find some later in the year so really again it's whatever meets uh, best meets your desires and needs and then as far as participants <laughs> yeah this is pretty broad general public or the business community again depending on the focus and the topic so with that I open it up for council discussion and I'll be taking notes and thoughts on what you'd like to include because it really it really is about how you'd like to structure the state of the city address which I believe we're looking at this fall so we can do that before the and are you leaving the date of it open or are you still talking about uh, looking at to, uh, September October time frame sometime in the fall is okay, sometime in the fall down. so that's our recommendation obviously want to change that timeline please well I think that's a great time because uh, we've done a budget a new budget um, but um, so maybe October uh, this this throw that out let's get I'll get this discussion started thinking about uh, some of the people that were concerned were people that are out of the area uh, until that time frame but they're all back in October um, so it gives every it, it opens up to all the city so I uh, Joe you want to start it? October, November, you know. Well, the only reason I don't, November, it runs into holiday time, and I think that makes it very difficult for families. And, and so now you're working around Thanksgiving. You know, I'd rather work around Halloween <laughs> than before that. Halloween? That sounds like Halloween. An advantage um, to doing it before you retreat. We generally hold your retreat in November, too, so there might be 
items that you hear during the Service Study and Survival Conference at the retreat. So that's why I wanted to come up and share that with everyone. Mm -hmm. Wally? So is the intention to have a state of the city event with question and answers with the audience? Otherwise, um, that's not normally what they have done. Well, then how are we going to come up with new ideas? We can, we can send, there. we can have Talk. card comment card, but really okay. state of the city is not. I for, thought it was just an address. Just that it, it, it's just put out the information. Okay. Uh, and most of them have had some kind of, uh, uh, hors d'oeuvres or, or something, but most of them that uh, are not paid, they don't they don't furnish uh, as much as the. And I will tell you, Avondale did have. I went to Avondale's, and um, it was mostly business people mm -hmm. uh, and some residents, but not many. Right. Well, they were I residents were on committees, probably were there, but and they could. And their city's quite big, and it was held on their patio, on that back patio. Um, and it had a lot of people, but it wasn't, there wasn't just standing room only. I mean, it was room to move around, so you could tell about it. We could always find out how many, probably we could find out how many people came to that. I do like your idea about later in October rather than the first two weeks of yeah, October. Yeah. And well, probably the middle of October is comfortable. Mm -hmm. Joe? Just a question, and, and again, I don't know which works out better. Is it better to have a state of the city after you've adopted a budget and you're a few months in or just before you're getting ready to adopt it so you list some of these issues that you have on there? That's, that's my only question. Is there more value in having it as you're getting ready to adopt, you know, like March as opposed to after a budget is done in October? You well, you have March. to think of it this well, way, Well, that's the only reason I mean, why I throw that out. Do, do, we want, do we want that kind of meeting? Uh, the, the, I think that... Um, there is plenty enough time for people to talk about the budget to come in that we take it around to people. Um, city manager did last time. We had three people. So this time we're just going to advertise a little bit more. We're going to try to call the homeowners associations and really get people and blast it out. Um, and I think that's the time. Uh, I'm just throwing it out, yeah, whether, I, I, whether there's know, value in doing it, you know, as you approach yeah, or after, yeah. that's all. I think the value is if we have some new announcements and some inspiring things that are happening to the city, and we have stories to tell about the city. And it's an upbeat. We, we have enough of downbeat in the emails and the newspaper articles and all of that, and you are all so accessible. And mm -hmm. so when I hear that you're not, you know, well, these people are, don't know what they're talking about. So I'm sorry. Joanne? Thank you, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to send this all to each of you, but um, it's great that you – checked out other cities uh, for their ideas, and we've kind of looked around. Uh, a friend of mine um, actually uh, works for Rancho Cordova, and <laughs> you've got a couple of you met him, Troy, uh, and he sent me, I asked him about his state of the city because they do multiple um, venues, and uh, I just thought, that, and they have like 67,000 people in their city, so similar in that regard, but uh, they have, actually they did it in November, and um, they had complimentary uh, desserts, and they had many uh, many groups that sponsored this, but they also had live music. So they turned it into, you know, kind of a, a fun type of event. But just to quickly, um, I, and I'm going to sh share this with you, but they had things like we got dirt on our shoes. They talked about new projects, um, they how they broke ground on things, new businesses that opened, projects of the city, um, street projects, entertainment centers. There was a new city manager, so he, you know, was kind of an introduction to the, the we're, people. We're not doing that, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> Let me make that very I'm just, I'm just saying, you know, the city manager the said something. Out there, yes. okay? <laughs> they did give awards. They, or they highlighted yeah. the awards of people within the city. Um, they talked about different things that are there. They had the police uh, came out and gave a report on different crime things and, you know, positive you know, things about uh, being in the city. And, you know, wa water conservation, a financial report. And I, I, I like your idea, you know, uh, when you're asking about are we going to have a question and answer time or should we have certainly cards out there of saying what is it that's interested you that we have not, t you know, spoken about and can we get back, can we contact you, you know, or do you have any ideas or things like that? You know, I agree that it should be open to everybody. It should be in a time when we know most people are going to be here, October, 
is a good time, I think. Um, I know that we get, I liked uh, when that's thought about, we do in November our retreat. So if we have this before the retreat, it's kind of fresh of talking with everybody. Yeah, we should know what their, what their needs are or, or wants. Correct, that and correct. Work it around that. Uh, and, you know, it's, it's one of those things that it's open to all. And, you know, I, I think we're all, I'd like to hear from everybody, but I have a feeling we're, we all want it to be, we all, I know we all want it to be successful, but I think we all want it to be where everyone feels welcomed and it's in a place that uh, is something like a high school auditorium. It's easy, accept, accessible, parking, everything, you know, um, I think you're right. That's the only one that we could possibly have it in to have the space. I mean, that's probably our high schools are probably auditoriums are our bigger space. So and now, which one? It'll just right. depend on, you know, on what they can do. The other, the other thought too, and back to your beginning one at of talking about how do we get out into the public and taking, you know, a council meeting on the road. If you if you space it out between the high schools. And you look at Millennium north of the freeway, you look at Desert Edge Central Goodyear, and you look at Estrella Foothills South Goodyear, and it's, you hit every one of those with a meeting, and you can even have some of a presentation that people didn't. I don't, I don't know. I'm just How throwing you, it out there. I, I think the whole thing, and I don't want me to down on this, but it's right here in front of us. It's right there looking at us, and it's being accessible and recorded and, and, and watched immediately. And I'm, I, that's where I think we've had trouble moving into other places because we haven't been able to do that very well here. Okay. First, before we go there, thanks for looking that up. That's exactly what we had talked about behind the scenes when they asked me um, in that because we want to give some information. But I do also want to have the latest and greatest information, some surprises for them. So yes. first, Joe, I'm going to go to Sherry. Um, I, I agree. I, I don't think we have enough for multiple or, or enough interest to do start off with multiple state of the city addresses. My concern was you wouldn't have enough people showing up and that wouldn't be a, a success. I think we're gonna have to build on it, start it small since we did our first one. Um, we've always had great success and our department heads have always been very accessible. Um, you know, maybe rather than have them give presentations, we could have them be accessible there for questions, more one-on-one -on -one questions so that we don't have somebody try to upstage the meeting. Because I, I, I visualize it as, as the mayor gives kind of like the presentation, and then we have other, you know, the city manager introduces the mayor, something, something along those lines. And then maybe the other department heads would be accessible and available to give information or, or get information. And then maybe we could, because we, we've done some very nice with economic development, have information out there for people on, on some of the goals to take with them to dis disseminate that information, um, because I think that's one of our, our, our biggest problems. We think we do a really good job getting the information out, but it, and we do, but it, like advertising is what, seven, you have to have seven connects before it actually reaches the, the party that you're, you're trying to sell the information to. So I think we do a good job, but I don't think we're making enough of the same repetitive connections to get that information out. So it, you know, different people get the information different ways and it will start to flow out there. Um, I, I, I like the idea of taking the council on the road or, or some such thing. I, I know that it has been a problem. I don't know if we have the ability to videotape and then put it up afterwards if it's not live stream. I know we did that with planning and zoning. We took it a couple, we always would take it, we took it once to Australia, we took it once to Desert Edge when I was on it. Um, I don't know the technology on that. Um, that would also be even if we take the council meeting on the road, we need to maybe invite the local, the high school key clubs, the, you know, the homeowners associations, the national honor societies from the high school, get people in there, get those, I want to say friendly audiences, but they're going to be very interested to learn and, you know, maybe do it at a time. I, I don't know if mornings, early in the morning is better as breakfast or the late afternoon, evening, so you can get the working people as well. So those are just thoughts. Comments, anybody? Joe? Well, first I wanted to piggyback on what Joanna covered. I like a lot of those comments or suggestions for topics that you had in there. A couple things that I would add I'd like to hear in the state of the city is, you know me, it sounds like a broken record when it comes to volunteerism, but we're trying to build a community. And 
and we want to do good news. And I think the focus on volunteerism, on how we use it within the city and the hours that are donated from our citizens, I think a focus on that in the state of the city would be good to cover only because that's who we are. And we get a lot of activity from our citizens kicking in. The other thing that's always dear to my heart is how did we get in the financial condition we are, which I think is really good, tie it to our policies, how that has gotten us to where we are as far as the condition we are. There are some cities that are really still trying to, to dig out of you know this great recession, and we had a lot of forethought in making sure that that wasn't going to be an issue us going down the road. I think that's important to focus on that. And I think you have it in the state of the city here on your other topics, but when it comes to the overview of the economic conditions, you know, maybe some trends showing where we were on the vacancies and where we are today, how the city has moved, you know, from 08 to now and how the vacancies now are being uh, being filled, you know, some of the top recruits that we've got in there, you know, kind of focus on that, the jobs and how we're moving with entertainment, et cetera. Um, I, to me, to add to what Joanne had would be maybe those those three areas. As far as moving the city council meetings around, I'm not quite sure I'm sold on that. We used to try to do it as budget. The problem is nobody showed up. And you spend a lot of time, a lot of resources setting everything up and nobody there. So um, and if you can convince me that people will get there, then I'm in. But otherwise, I think uh, it's a lot of time and energy spent uh, without a whole lot of uh, results based on what I've seen in the past. That's just my two cents worth. Bill? You know, I have to, uh, I have to piggyback and agree with you entirely on that. You know, we look at the number of folks that um, – show up to the regular meetings and they're no offense to anybody who's sitting here but we really don't get a very big crowd of of folks unless they're here for a very specific issue um, so i don't know that the road show is the thing to do with the actual council meeting um, i like the idea of us getting the information out in perhaps a less formal state of the city and more of a town hall type of approach um, but this whole conversation seems to be um, we don't we don't know what it is we want to deliver yet. So I'm not I'm not hearing any discussion about what is the what are we trying to achieve? What's our objective? We're, what we're being asked for is what kind of format do you want? What de time of the year do you want it? But we haven't talked about what it is we're trying to achieve with it. The state of the city is giving information. On well, we've already city. found out that state, state of the city doesn't mean the same thing to everybody. No, so no. what the does that mean? The state of the city has done to two things. Okay, it's done. We separated up to the businesses, uh, and corporations, industry, and then we do citizens. That's the difference, and that's the difference of of how it's handled and what you and you know. But probably most of that information that we are having this first one is going to be transferred right on to the next one with additional information. So I, it really, they're really, other than the venue and where you have it, that's a big difference. Right, but what is it that we're going to deliver in that message? You're Are gonna, we going to deliver this, the exact same thing we're going to do in the Geared for, uh, geared for Growth? No. Joanne's shaking her head no, but I heard we're doing two different ones, one for businesses and one for the residents. Well, what does that mean? All right, would well, staff kind of address that? I, have, um, I went back to the slide with the common topics that we saw in city, State of the City addresses. And so the getting, I think, the other mic. We're not mic off or try the other, try bring, the, bring other the other one up and see. You'll just do that. Oh, yeah, yeah. much better. Ooh, I can hear myself. Yeah. Uh, so these were some of the suggested top, or topics that I discovered while I was doing my research. And then the, I have written down the ideas of um, Council Member Osborne provided um, from her um, research, and they have been taking notes, but uh, it is a, a something we'll need as we walk away as to what's the content of uh, the state of the city. No, I'm going to take it. Let me. Um, yeah, because it's not coming through to me. Yeah, let me get uh, one layer above that. What are we trying to do? These are the topics, but what are we? Are we trying to educate the community? Are we trying to? Uh, have an interaction, the council and the community? Are we, I mean, obviously we're going to try to do both, but in what format? That's why I say sometimes the, the town hall format, the here, and I think Council Member Campbell mentioned it, we're going to have them ask questions because if they're asking questions, then it's, a, then it's a town hall format. And there was, our experience in the last uh, eight or 12 weeks has really shown that the community has a lot of questions. And we have not done a very good job of communicating all of the successes that we've had. 
So that's a good opportunity okay. for us to, to do that and to ask those questions. Yeah, I, and if that's what we're going to try to achieve, then, then our whole, we're trying to say we're going to do state of the city, and this is what state of the cities are. But maybe we don't want to do a state of the city. Maybe we want to do something completely different. And I just um, um, disagree with you a little bit on the, what sure. you're saying. I think you're putting far too much blame on the city not getting information out. I think we have I share to, as much responsibility as that. Me, we have to divide this up. Citizens responsibility, city's responsibility. And in the middle of that, you and I and the public must have this big printed word, listen and read. I can't direct people with their hands. I can't put a phone in their uh, ear. And I can't turn on their videos for them. So I don't want us to, oh, the city hasn't done. No, our city's done some good work. It's just that people are not listening. I, I'm not disagreeing with you to have your format, okay? But I, I am disagreeing with you on that part. Uh, I'm not going to have us tearing down the city, saying the city's not, not, not. So let's put it on an even well where we, we can look at both sides and say, okay, Let's improve our citizen side, and then we'll improve our side. But they have to come forth with this bill. They have to be as agreeable as you are sitting around this table. Mayor, my, my whole point in using that particular phrase is in communities that I've done other work in, a lot of, a lot of the time you will hear residents say the community or this department or this whatever is the best kept secret in our area. And what they mean by that is there's all these really good things that are happening and we're just not getting it. Now, I'm not saying that we're not doing it, but whatever it is that we're doing may not be connecting with as many people as we possibly could. So are you saying, because it's been suggested, that we would have the departments come and they would talk about the things that are going on? Is that what you're talking about? That If that's what we're going to try to okay. achieve, and that right. so goes so back that, to my original statement, okay. what are we trying to achieve? If so we're that trying? doesn't have to be just a town hall. That can be a state of the city, too. I mean, they're both, I think we're getting mixed up in semantics. Unless right. you want you want people, and, and you have to be aware what kind of evening you're preparing here, okay? How much time do you want to spend in presentations, and how much time do you want to spend on questions and uh, interest groups because you're going to attract some interest groups so now we have to plan you have to plan your timing for this so keep that in mind as you're making these suggestions so uh, i think okay cheryl sure, i think you had your finger up first well um, I, I respect what's being said but i think town halls and state of the cities are very different mm -hmm. um and i think they both have their value and I could see a city hall being, or I'm, I'm seeing it, well, city hall, but town hall format being very successful because I don't think we've ever really given that opportunity or, or had that opportunity. Um, I've been involved with the, the chamber, did several town halls over the years, and wonderful things have come out can of you, them. Can you just help articulate for me? the difference you feel between the town hall and the state of the city and what you experienced with your experience at the, sure. at the chamber? Well, a town hall um, that I've experienced, and quite honestly, I haven't experienced a lot of them, but I did go to a couple of Glendale's town halls just to see what they were and what, what the format looked like. Uh, to see if it was something that I could do in another, you know, by switching around a little bit. And um, to me, it seemed that the mayor set her agenda, what she wanted to communicate to the citizens, that she had a list of things that were um, valuable or ongoing in the city that she wanted to communicate. And, and then it looked to me like it was to create a positive synergism um, in the population that was there. And it was targeted, of course, to business people. I mean, it, it, then that's just the way. I'm just... That, that's my experience. Town halls, on the other hand, in my experience, you pick two or three um, of topics that are hot topics, um, whatever that might be, education or um, workforce development or whatever seems to be important in the community that could use some um, 
some energy. And then you go to the, the people that are uh, experienced in that area, and they develop white papers. And when the people sign up to attend the town hall, they're given the white papers to come to the meeting. And then there's a presentation. Usually you don't do more than two or three topics. And um, then the people uh, just share ideas. And that's where the questions, and that's what, but it's not a question. It's not a protagonistic question and answer. It's rather a team building question and answer, you know, looking towards solutions. Just, I mean, the Arizona Town Hall is basically set up that way, only they only have one topic pretty much, and all, every team works on that. Uh, but that, that's what we used to do. And quite honestly, um, that was where the steam came to the Seroptimus for the uh, New Life Center. Uh, that uh, our, one of our other ones, that's where the energy came to develop the uh, Boys and Girls Club. And uh, so I, that, that's my experience. Of a town that, hall. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for explaining that to me. Joanne? Well, I think that um, what's always exciting about our city is that we tend to be innovative and we tend to try something out and we're able to go and change something to make it better the next year, you know, and, and I think that that's the cool thing about where we are right now is putting something together that we know we can always mold it for next year to be to be something even better, and uh, it would it'd be great that this first one turns out the best, but uh, I guess to me, um, how I kind of think about it is almost an in-between of what everybody's been talking about. Uh, I think that you addressing um, everyone, it, it should be you. You are, you know, the, the figurehead of our city, and it should be you, and um, you should be out there and, and talk to everyone. But just as I've seen over the years from, from building blocks, that when our fire chief and our police chief and our couple of our directors come out and speak to the principals and speak to the superintendents, they love hearing from that person. And I think that that's a little bit about what we're talking about because it could be, you know, Michelle coming out and, and discussing the new things that economic development are doing and their new projects. I and mean, each one of them could have something very special that we're talking about with the city. Um, you're kind of that MC of sorts. You will give an address and then you'll, you know, be bringing them each out. Uh, and then I think that, especially as to Bill's point and what Sherry, the three of us have seen through this election cycle, there's a lot of questions out there by our citizens. There are. And so I think that if we you know, had presentations and then we said, you know what, we know we haven't answered everything that is a burning question to you out there. So each one of our directors are here. Each one of us are here. And we are, are ready for the next half hour to answer whatever questions you can come up. You know, We're all here waiting for you. And I guess that's how we started. And, and so you're giving the opportunity for the questions we're get, giving the opportunity for people to express themselves if it hasn't been answered by all of the input from the very beginning. I think that's the, the easiest way to, to start it. And then, you know what, if that's a flop, then next year we try something else. You know, that's just kind of where I'm thinking. So. Uh, uh, Wally? Well, to me, a um, state of the address is the head of that organization or whatever it is, gives their vision, um, their th thought on where they want the city to go, where they want to take them, and get us to buy into it. Is basically, you're painting a picture to tell us all this wonderful stuff. And I think a state of the state uh, could be very effective for Goodyear because we've got a lot of exciting things that are going on. Um, I like the idea of a town hall if it's structured correctly. Um, but I don't see it at the same time as the state of the state because it's entirely different. And since this will be our inauguration of a state of a state, I don't know that I have ever heard of a state of the state in the 15 years I've lived here. Have I missed them? No. We haven't had them. Okay. No. Good. It has been. None. So, yes. Good. So, I haven't missed them. So, this will be our first time. And um, 
I think we need to be very realistic on uh, the message we give and on how we want to uh, set it up. I like the idea of it being in a school auditorium. That's the only place we have that we could fit a lot of folks in that it, regardless of whether it's at, a, at um, Desert Edge or Millennium, it just, I mean, if it's at a school, people will know to go there. And um, I like the idea of, I, I don't want to have a lot of preaching there. Uh, I don't want to have, uh, I don't want to be overwhelmed with all of this information. Um, so we need to have it really structured. And I like the idea of having uh, folks available to talk. But if you'll remember when we did um, the general plan, and I remember it so well, I believe we were in this room. Uh, we had, a, no, we were in the library and we had an open meeting and we had everybody there to talk about the concern that uh, some of the residents had with how the general plan was progressing and that they had not heard that we had had 52 meetings, public meetings and all of that. And I thought it was very helpful, but I didn't want it to get out of hand either. So um, I don't want us to detract from the mayor's address because that's the big deal. The mayor's vision, that's why we're having it. It's the state of the state. It's not the state of Wally or the state of Joe. It's the state of this city, and you're our spokesperson, and you're going to lay it out, and we're just going to smile and let you do all the talking. Well, I, I, my uh, state of the city will be from this group here. Well, of course, but yeah, you're no, speaking so. it. Uh, Sherry? I, I agree with Wally uh, 100%. I think that's kind of seems to be an, in Sherilyn, and I, I think we're kind of all pretty much on the same page. I, I think of a state of the city uh, like the State of the Union when the president speaks. You know, we, we, we invite our representatives. We, we invite, I see it as a more formal, whereas a town hall and a, taking questions is less formal, you know, because you don't see the governor when he's given to the legislature or anybody taking questions. I, I don't see that. I see that as a good avenue um, because, like I said before, I, I think our problem is we, we get the information out. We are having a disconnect, and we just have to keep getting it out. And, and, and sooner or later, we will get that connect with the people that want the information. Some people will not come I mean, and, and will not connect, and there's nothing we can do about that. Um, I do like the idea of town halls. Maybe instead of the council meeting at other places, we could do town halls at other places. Um, and then with the questions, that, that's exactly – in fact, I had a couple of people sitting next to me at that one who were a little – miffed i don't remember who it was but it was a couple from pebble creek they were a little miffed that a couple of people i don't want to say hijacked it but spent the time with really long involved questions for bringing that up because that well, is my right. concern and, yeah. and so i've did. seen where people take they write the questions down anytime during the presentation then staff asks the questions that's how i've seen it done i mean the one at the wigwam that we just went to with with the governor there was like three or four questions asked but the staff went through them so they, there were questions that people wanted answered, but it wasn't like someone's giving a long diatribe. So maybe that's where we get that out to the public, and, and we can pick different issues for different places or whatever. That's a great idea, kind of focus them at different places. But I see the state of the city as a much more formal affair. Joe? Yeah, just to piggyback what Sherry said, I, I see it as informational on the topics that you selected are key to the city, where you've been, where you are, and where you're going. Mm -hmm. OK, coming from the leader who will give that spiel uh, and we decide on what topics you want to cover, all positive, all focused. I see the other half where you do the town hall There's a separate environment. I, I personally wouldn't want to mix the two together, separate the state of the state of the city uh, in its own. And are, uh, are you saying and, uh, uh, just clarify this? Are you saying. Uh, we'd have two things going out to public. We'd no, no, no. What I'm saying is, you I said if you're going to the do them, separate them now, right. and then doing a town hall. And but separate them. Be, don't yes. don't mix and match them. Well, they, they, some other time, they won't be mixed and matched. No, but I'm, what I'm saying is, is to me, state of the state of the city is informational. Where we've been, where we are, and vision of where we're going on some of the topics that we're talking about. All right, okay, Joanne so. covered some of them. I put some of them down. There's some of them up on the board. Move forward with that. And that's the state of the city. So okay. the, the town hall then would be? Something separate. But it still would be information. Yeah, but with the, with the town hall, I see the town hall as they were mentioning here. Mm -hmm. You could have questions, Q&A, and that type of stuff with the town hall. Okay. okay. But, you, but we need to set the agenda. Ahead, Cheryl. With the town hall, when you pick the topics, right. you, you, 
you present a paper that has the pros and cons of, or maybe two sides of the topic, so that people go in with a basic. No. Okay. Um, with but a, is that going to answer? I'm going to interject before you even finish. Is that going to answer what the people have complained about? The people Oops. complained that they were not going to hear what the state of the city was, that, where we are. So now how do we get that in? No, no, I'm saying two very different events. Two, one is a problem-solving technique to get the community energized together. Okay, to out, we take two out to the community. Yes. Okay, I, I misunderstood. Yeah, no, I, it, they're, they're just, abs in my opinion, they're absolutely almost 180 degrees. One is meant to be informational and to, to factual. Um, this is the real story, folks. This is where we're at. The other one is meant, these are challenges or threats, whatever you want to call them. I prefer challenges. And let's put our heads together and come up with potential ways of resolving so, okay. blank, whatever it is we decide on, whether it's education, transportation, um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. water. Yep. Go ahead, Bill. Did oh, you go ahead. I was just going to say, I'm, I'm with you all on the definition of the state of the city. I, I believe that formality, and I, I'm totally with you on that. Um, I, th I was just throwing out ideas of, because this is something that's our own, and it doesn't mean that we have to follow, you know, the footprint of every other one. And so that's why, from hearing from everybody of the questions that people are asking, if we're not hitting it, and it wasn't taking questions from the audience as a town hall would be. It was back to kind of like what, Wally, you were talking about um, with, with the general plan format was everybody's here that may be able to answer any other questions that you have. It wasn't a taking questions from the audience type of thing. I was just trying to see if there was a way of having the formality of what we all envision state of the city of being and all of these different topics that, that Joe and I have said or, or whatever. But at the very end, it feels like, at least to me, that you round the whole thing up by saying, if there's still a burning question that you have, we're here for the you know, next 15, half an hour, whatever, to be able to, you know, individually you can come up and ask the question. That's that's where I was getting at. Similar to what we so. did um, at the um, with with the general plan. General thing. plan. Yeah. That mm -hmm. the last meeting we had with the general plan. Yeah. I'm gathering that the rest. Who was there at that? Well, I think we, we were all. We were all there. All there. I think yeah. all of us were there. Is that if you looked at that? Is that is that a scenario? Not for the state of the city. Not for the state no, of the city. No, not for the city. For the, for the, for I'm the out of the state. Hall. For the town now we're town hall. Now we're just thinking. Take it out big. Town hall. Well, I think, okay, so we're all in the same agreement for the state, what we call a state of the city. Yeah, we're, we're, we're all there. in it. Okay. So the town hall, I, I, let's, to me, get that hall. state of the city okay. complete. <laughs> now, um, so let's get the state of the city over and then do the town hall. Well, you wanted, uh, we what kind of have an idea thing? on the That's state fine. of the city so I mean, we can tell you what nope. we sort of plan with the, what the mayor, Oops, like you said, what the mayor wants to put out there so we sort of have and can after this, can we kind of talk about that? Do we? You don't have it, do you? Uh, you mean other events, or because um, what we heard was, de you know, designing and, and planning for a state of the city, and then a desire to discuss if we wanted other events like the council meetings at different locations, town hall meetings, and other okay, let's ideas. That right now. So I think what I've heard on the state of the city is it's formal. It's from the mayor. It's in October. It's in an auditorium. It's, I'm using yours because it's easier. I wrote down all of the ideas, but where we've been, where we are, and where we're going kind of thing on a positive, high note, a vision. And so I think the state of the city, I think I've, I have direction there. It's just as if the council wants to do other things other than the state of the city. Yeah. That was the whole point of my question a little while ago was what are we trying to do? Now we've identified the separation between a town hall and the state of the city, which I'm in complete agreement with. If we wait to do the state of the city until November, October, all we're doing is we're telling the city this is what we are. 
if we then try to retreat in November and make decisions based on it'll be a, the exact same retreat that we've had the last four years, which is us going by our best guess. If we're looking for an opportunity to get feedback or try to understand what's going on in the community and taking that feedback, we really need the town hall to occur in October and get that feedback. And this state of the city needs to occur earlier. Um, I might suggest in inauguration years, perhaps that's the night to do it. On that, on that one night in June, hey, that we're at the end of the budget year, this is what we envision the city, here's our new council, blah, blah, blah. And, and then in the, in the off years, when there's not an inauguration, then we can figure out what time of the year that is. But in October is the year, I'm just throwing it out there, that we do the town hall to try to get that feedback. And we've all talked about different ways of doing it. Um, the general plan concept, that type, the way that that was delivered seemed to be very effective in the community. That would be a way to get that done. Um, I don't know what how they referred to it when the uh, presenters stay at a table and the people wrote, I refer to that as the speed dating format, um, <laughs> where everybody rotates around to ask specific questions, but you can have PD at one table, fire at another, economic development, and you can have that and then have people go to there and, and ask those questions and then rotate them, or you can just do the vignette style, however we wanted to do it, but to have, have that uh, capacity there. Um, personally, we've talked a lot about where, I like Desert Edge, it's in the center of the school, uh, center of the, of the, uh, of the city, and we're not we're not picking north south uh, because that obviously is a is a big deal. And I can envision this turning into death by PowerPoint, and I hope that wouldn't be. It would really just be questions, um, you know, as as we go through. But um, I, I'm just fearful if we if we only do the state of the city in October, we're not going to get the feedback that we're seeking. I, I have to agree with you on that. I, I see where you're coming, Bill. My only question on the feedback is if you have a town hall where you have 10 people show up and you're going to base our future retreat on those 10 people as opposed to annually or every two years, we do a survey where we ask our citizens where do they want us to put our money, what do they like, they dislike, where should we put our energy. I feel more comfortable using that as a basis of our retreat, because it's supposedly scientifically tested, surveyed, 5% delta plus or minus, as opposed to maybe 10 or 15 people who show up and say, no, this is where I want you to do or that, you, you know, kind of come where I'm coming. So that's my only concern is if we come with our retreat in November and we use a, um, a town hall forum that has maybe 15, 20 people, or maybe even 30 people, as opposed to the scientific one where we go out and we ask them, where do you want us to put the money? Like Port Parks came in and a couple of other issues had come in. I, I don't know, and I think maybe that would be more of a driving force to help us formulate our, you know, retreats, me personally. Right. I'm not suggesting that that's going to be the only thing that's going to drive your decision making because I don't think that would ever be the case. And every year when we do the, the citizen surveys, that, at least for me, that filters in as a here's, a, here's an opportunity that right. every time I engage with, with residents, there's another, another thing that goes into that decision making, talking to staff, there's another thing that goes in. I mean, there's a million things that, that help us come to decisions. All I'm saying is if we it, – it's just one more opportunity for us to have some more information dropped into our little, you know, sieves in our brain before we come up with a, a decision. That, that's all. If we wait, then it doesn't, get a, doesn't even get a chance to influence it. Harry? Um, I don't know if October is the best, but I think for the first one, that's kind of the date we probably should do it because we really can't squeeze it in at this point, and then we're going to hit summer quicker than we know it because we're almost to April. Um, maybe once we schedule some town halls after that, maybe we move it up before the summer for the next one. Um, but I, I just think logistically, otherwise we're waiting until 2016. So I think we're kind of... You know, the year's going faster than we think by the time we get a plan. So we might just have to do October, see how it works. And then if we want to move it, I don't think it's set in stone. We can always move it up. Bill, did you say something about uh, we may want to do it at election time after someone is in June? Elected? No, at the inauguration. In June? In June. State of city? Well, if you start that tradition, you could have a new mayor someday in the state of June. Oh, yeah. 
So you have to think about that, and, and that puts that person on. A, that person will be like, well, I'm not too sure. I've been, you know. So you. Uh, I've been mayor for a why, week. Yeah. Or an yeah, hour. So you want to think of the future when uh, when I'm not sitting here and they have a new person come on, and that's a lot of pressure to put on that new person. Well, I just you know the the president gets sworn in on the 21st yeah. and. Mm -hmm. A couple and weeks later, they speech, make another yeah. big speech. Mm -hmm. So if you're coming in as a brand new mayor, I would love to hear from whoever that person is what they think the vision of the Except city with is. Except the president, he's not so close to the people. He doesn't go to the store with them. He doesn't I go know. to the church yeah. with them. He's not in the schools with them. And so they have <laughs> contact with us immediately. The president has shield. He's able to sit back and decide upon things. But as an elected right. official in a city, you are not. No. No, I know. And I could tell you uh, this week what, how long it took me to go through the Safeway again. And, you know, so it just doesn't work that way. So, uh, Molly? Well, I, uh, I think that your suggestion about having it in June was admirable. But if I'm a newly elected council member, I don't want to stay to the state on the night I'm being sworn in because I'd like to have a little festivity, you know, that sort of thing. Sure. I like that. Um, is is, is it ever on the table to move the time that we have our retreat in November? Or are we locked in? Uh, we, are, we are definitely not locked in. And matter of fact, the dates this year, we have them set for November 20th and 21st. The reason for the November time frame, and, and certainly that can change it, uh, if council would like that, it's to um, get input as we just start to formulate budget as we start to formulate CIP. So it's just a, a, a good opportunity to do that. And then if there, there are any um, follow-ups as far as um, if there are new program or service, we have a chance to pull that together in time for the budget. But that, that's really been the, the biggest reason um, for the November date. So October means that it's, if you can give something in October, get the feedback in October. You'd have plenty of time, yeah. It, get it to the staff before their November one. Okay, well, perhaps I've lost where we are. Are we trying to now say we don't want to do the state of the city? Right, we, we've already city. taken care of the one we're already going to do. Well, I know, but yeah. we don't want now, to do that the in October. so far is they still feel the mayor should get up and, and uh, speak on the state of the city. Yeah. But you should have additional forum to that. Is that what you're saying? No, that stands on its own. I don't that think so. See, I'm getting yeller. Sorry. I've had a I long day, I was going to say, too. can I? Um, so help, Wynette. Well, what I think <laughs> I heard was the, the initial conversation was in October. Bill, or excuse me, Councilmember Stipp. talk Stip, a little bit louder because I'm not hearing Councilmember Stipp suggested um, doing it at the inauguration. Right, and that's But that's it gone. was a suggestion, and I think we're back to what I'm hearing is in October, um, in an auditorium, um, the mayor only providing her vision, where we've been, where we're at, where we're going, kind of thing on a positive note. And um, that's what I've, I've heard so far from. Oh, yeah. that's what I said. I'm sorry. Yeah. I thought you were saying we needed to do the town hall before. <clears throat> that's what, what Wynette just said is exactly what I heard also from, right. the, from this group. And we've all also said we wanted two different mm -hmm. right. forums. All I suggested was if we want to try to do a town hall, if it's important for us to get the feedback before the retreat, then we need to do it in October. If nobody is interested in having that town hall before the retreat, then the timing of the town hall is completely in flux. Okay. Thank and you. That was all I was, the only point right. I was trying to make. Because that confused me because I'd like to have the mayor do her state of the city. Because oh, I would too. And I'd like it first to set the tone. Correct. To, to start the conversation. That's just my thought. Well, I will tell you, uh, I'll get you in just a minute. Uh, when I have been approached to doing this, I've had somewhat of a fear about doing it and just doing that. Well, and part of it is because I do believe we get a lot of information out to the people, mm -hmm. okay? I know there are these pockets that say we don't, and there's something, but we do get quite a bit of information. And the information we're not getting, and because I, I attended some of those debates, were isolated information from some people. And, and not everybody in the, it wasn't consensus that that 
was something that wasn't being done. I, I want it to be good. I want right. you to have what you want to have. Okay. But Thank I just you. want to make sure that those people who have questions are anticipating some answers. And so your mayor gets up and says, blah, 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 and they walk away and say, well, didn't get any information from that city. They're not telling us anything. They're just telling us a vision. Think about it. Mayor, most of the not all the feedback came from just those two sessions. I mean, walking door to door and talking to yeah. people, there were a lot of questions. And the, being able to answer those questions and provide that information is, the, is what helped, which is what made me formulate my statement of they just don't know. Now, you're right. You can't, we can take them to water and we can shove their head in it, but we still can't make them drink it. But if, if we're doing something, then we can say, look, We've done a state of the city. We've done town hall meetings. We've done, we, I mean, here's the 10 things that we've done. What more do you want is okay. But, you know, the level of communication that um, w we just haven't done it yet. And that was my only point. But um, just because we do a state of the city early in one year doesn't mean we can't do it later in another year either. You are the sitting mayor. We are having an event. The people who are being put into office are already here. So while the inauguration is important, perhaps that becomes a, a good opportunity in this year to do it at that night. We have to do something. Right, that's what I'm saying. If we do it and so, then we can so do the I other one later and then next year make it different. Clear, and that's what we're trying to do. So um, it, it's council's decision on this one. So uh, Sherilyn was first, I'll put you next. Yeah, I, I just wanted to make clear, I don't think any of us don't want to do it, are not interested in doing it, but we want to do it in a way that the most people can participate with us. We don't want it to seem like we waited for certain populations to leave town before we right. had a state of the city. So for this year, I think October is, in my opinion, it, it is, is why we're, it, it makes sense. I just think it's good common sense. Um, and I, I, I think it can be made very clear at the state of the city that we're all open for, for input and to be approached, but we don't have to do it right then and there, because I, I, I think that takes away from the um, stateliness of what we're doing. And you know what? I think, too, it needs to be clear to all of us and to our citizens as well. We want to make it the best it can be, but we've got to start somewhere. And to take a format that is proven, mm -hmm. because there's a reason why so many people do it that way, because there are people that have been doing it for hundreds of years, and it has, uh, you know, is mitigated to that point where this is the format they found most usable. And then, we, but we can always massage it as, as we intend to make this an annual event. And I think... It's a city. Yeah, I'm talking about the state of the city right now. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm not. Okay. But I just think it's really important that we all understand that, that you don't come up with the best the first time, generally speaking. I mean, you, uh, anyway, that's, that's my. While you were saying this, do you, the other state of cities, many of them had another speaker come in. They had, uh, like, Chris Camacho from GPAC came up. And then they had a businessman come up that represents a, a, a local business, kind of an entrepreneur type, and they spoke. All right, so I just want to throw that out to you. Joanne, you have? And that, that certainly sounds like the business one that you'll be doing here re shortly. So yeah, and thank this, you. That's what, that. This yes. is what they did for the state of the city. Right, um, right. Uh, surprise, bring somebody up. Yeah. Uh, Avondale brought somebody up. Um, I don't know, didn't they go to some of the other ones? I'm going to Peoria soon, so I'll uh, know what that. Um, well, I don't know who's next year. Oh, I was. Um, Sherilyn, you're, you're, you're correct on tried and true uh, formats as to, to why to start. You know I like this to be different. <laughs> but, and I just think that it's, it's fine. I think that what would be really nice if we decide to do the two different types of formats, State of City should, should come first. Because like Bill said, you're setting the stage. And then it can be the invite to 
the town hall that will be coming up because back to Wally's question, why does our retreat have to be in November? Because if it could be in January, then we've, you know, gotten the information. You've had the, the formality of the state of the city. We go into, so this, I mean, if it even works this, this year, I don't know. But if you had an early October state of the city, we're inviting for early November, early November doing the um, whatever we want to call it, town hall or, or whatever that venue is. You're putting out the invitation about this is going to be the next, you know, highlight that you all can come and however it looks. And then we get together in January and we take it all from the two events and we bring it What's together. Successful? Mm-hmm. Uh, this is just really brief. I, I agree with what Sherilyn was saying, and, and I, I like the the format. And we kind of give an invite or get further information, give something a takeaway that will be come to the the next. Um, yeah, I also think the one problem with June is is not just. Um, I know we're talking about the Pebble Creek people that community that a lot of people leave and the retirees leave in, in Canamia, but you also got a lot of families are going in June too because our schools get out in second, you know, third week in May, we're done with school. So I would be afraid if we try that, we'd have a very limited audience. So I'd rather have the biggest pool as possible to make it a success. Joe? No, my only concern, and agree, I agree that there's two separate formats, but when you're doing Q&A and questions and answers, and again, we have a lot of surveys that get that back, depending on the population, are you truly getting the input of what those questions, especially if they're requesting certain things be done, that represents the entire population or just the small segment that's there? So we just got to be careful as you go through there, especially when you get into your retreat, that a lot of the other information we lay down in advance doesn't counter, counteract it or contradict it or et cetera. So, uh, again, just, yeah, that, uh, you know, it's all it. Yeah, so. But I don't have a problem with with having the two separate one. But if you're going to do a state of the city, I, it's more information, more formal, getting the information out to them. Mm-hmm. Bill? Okay. So we've we've all been talking about the same kind of state of the city format, which is a mayor vision, where we are, where we're going, where we've been. None of that, at least in my mind, and I don't know how anybody else, none of that involves Chris Camacho or anybody else from the business community. That is your address about this city. And we have a geared for growth, which addresses the other the other side of it. And I think that's been our, our confusion and what started this whole issue from the very beginning is everybody else in Avondale and Surprise and whatnot, their quote unquote state of the city was a, this is where we're at for business development. They all called it open for business. And, um, but they refer to it as a state of the city. The, when I'm going to say the kind of the average person heard the state of the city, they're thinking what we've just been talking about tonight. What does the mayor have to say? Where are we going? Where have we been? What are we going to do? So we're using that phraseology interchangeably, and I think that's what gets us into trouble. In our minds, the state of the city is what we've defined tonight. It's not what Avondale defined or anybody else. So um, for me, I would rather I'd rather hear from the mayor and and that whole piece, and then we're done. Um, and leave the business community to do the business one. I mean, we're charging them. They're going to go and have a lunch, and they're going to do whatever. The other thing, that's for the residents, and that's for for them. or any. And then anybody else who wants to come, if a business person wants to come and listen to what the mayor has to say for the vision, great. Come on, have some cookies and sit with everybody else. Um, but for me, I'd like to make sure that they are cle- clearly separate. I agree. I agree. All right, I think we got consent. Uh, Sherilyn, I'm sorry. Did but, you no, I, I agree with that, but I just kind of wanted to cl- clarify something, Joe. When you do a town hall, it's not just come as come can't. The reservations at the town hall. Um, reservations are made. Um, it's not that you can't walk in. It's just that you will know. If only 10 people make reservations, then you cancel the event because you've got 10 people that you can actually call and say it's obviously not a good time. We have not had the interest. So you're not going to get just 3 to 10 people because that's not the way you run a town hall. Okay. Any other comments? I think my direction is is clear on the state of the city. And then uh, what we'll do is discuss retreat timing, town hall, 
kind of try and narrow that focus, timing of that and content, and then have that discussion with you. But right now I'll focus on the state of the city, knowing that there's a desire to do possibly another event, a town hall like event. Is that correct? Everybody's satisfied here? Okay. All right. Okay. Thank uh, you. Well, I'm going to adjourn this meeting. Well, can we do other ideas? Sure. Oh. <laughs> I thought we had them all in there, but go ahead. I thought other was like just oh, other. Okay. Well, you go. Give me some other ideas. Okay. This is just some stuff, and some of it's good. Some of it may not be so good, so I'm just going to throw out a bunch of stuff there. Um, with There was an article about youth commissions, and one was about Peoria. And I think Wally, she's nodding her head. She saw it. What they do, I might have talked to you about that. You did. What, what they do is they have some of their youth commission members actually sit up here and be able to ask questions. They don't get a vote. And I don't know if that's something anyone would be interested in, but it really gets them really involved in the like process. Like a work session bring Yeah, in. like they get to, to sit here and, and ask questions and get the packet. Okay. And, you know, so that, that I thought that was a really innovative idea. Um, and the other one is if there's some way, and I don't know how this would work logistically, of course I didn't think that far out, but if we could have a way to update either each council member have a home page that we can update or, or something that we can get, we've all got our individual Twitter and Facebook, but that means someone's got to subscribe to seven different pages. Or if, if someone can do it, that we can update it every once in a while. You mean on a website? Yeah, where we have some kind of bulletin board so we can say these are the things that are happening like in Australia or these are the things that, you know, the mayor's going to this week. So, you know, just kind of something that I've, I've seen it on Phoenix and other websites where they have it. And I don't know if it's something I don't want to give the staff because we have a very limited staff and I don't want to overwork them. But if there's some way that we can maybe like just send an email that it can be updated and I don't know the website updated kind of keep it up to date because I think that's part of the information issue is we do have so many people have Twitter and their own Facebook but there's no linkages so it's a lot of effort and people don't necessarily it's back to the communication both sides the other side has to communicate too but realistically if it's all somehow linked or maybe we could link to our own websites and or page and then we update our page I don't know that's just a thought to get more information out there easier for people rather than I subscribe to Bill's Twitter the mayor's Twitter and my Twitter your Twitter we Twitter each other and then I repost <laughs> I your Twitter you know well, we tweet I'm sorry we don't Twitter <laughs> sorry if not Bill's Twitter <laughs> I don't know that was just a thought to get more information out there I, I put it down here so. okay. Bill? you know one of the things that um, I had in my one-on-one uh, -on -one with uh, the manager was the you know, we get that once or twice a week notes to know little email that uh -huh. comes out. And I had suggested we try to find a way to make that available. Not that specific, but a tool like that. Quick hit, five, six bullets, this is what happened, available to the residents. And that might solve that problem. Um, not that I'm that interesting, but quite frankly, if you're waiting for me to tweet or put something on Facebook, you're going to wait a long time um, for that. But that that way we're not we're not in even in an informal competition among one another um you know i and, and no offense but i can imagine the competition between councilmember campbell councilmember osborne and you on how many people can post more things on I'm that i'm glad you left me out <laughs> yeah i don't post that much on no i know you but, should see it it's but i'm sad. you know what i'm saying but if we have something that that gets generated internally that's a quick hit gets the information out then um, it, it's less about us and it's more about what, what the city is doing. Um, and if we want to self-promote, then we yeah. can. Yeah, yeah uh, we have that. When I first well, I was on the committee at Pebble Creek, I did that. It was called Did You Know? Oh, that's and they, right. And remember that? Yeah. And they put that out all the time. And it was mm -hmm. just one sentence or just did you know this is coming up or did you know this was decided upon or did you know you got to keep your garage door closed or do you know something like that and it was just short but it was long and people looked at it so um I, I, just a I, minute i've got both oh, of you who, who raised their hand for go ahead Joanne. oh i was going to uh, total agreement with bill on on that because um i thought those have been wonderful uh, little little blurb notes that have been coming to us, and I see a great value to our citizens in seeing that same type of thing, whatever you want to call it. And, you know, when you sign up to the email blast that we receive from Parks and Rec or wherever, you know, we get those once a week or something like that. So I don't see why we wouldn't be doing that same type of thing with with the notes. Yes, why not? 
we have that in all areas and you just sign up if you want parks and rec if you want council member updates from last night so we have yeah we have that already available on the website citizens do have to sign up for it because we don't push out mass emails to everybody but you can go in and select the different areas that you want to get notifications on and there's a numerous different areas um, and so we have that available and right we now. Have, have we, and maybe your Mary hasn't seen it, can we put that mm -hmm. out in the in focus? Sure. Can we can, we line up we can do so more communication on it. But, but isn't that specific to a certain department? I mean, I think that what this is for our residents is saying, Summer. these are the top things this week. Or, you're or you're talking, but that's separate. You could so do you a, could hot yeah, a hot yeah. topic section. Yeah, a hot topic. Yeah, you're Where signing up the, for weekly hot topic. You know, and instead blast. of the specific yeah. area, it's exactly. a weekly hot, and they then they have to sign up to get it instead right. of I could, sending yeah, it I could out. I see a lot of people wanting that. But we you we know. do have that capability um, in the ver different areas. You just areas. have to market it then, because obviously that's so the thing. we can uh, start. If, I don't know. I don't know when that mm -hmm. in focus. I don't know the latest when we have to have that. I don't know what the next publication is, and we have to have it in. But it sure would be good to get it in as soon as we can. A little calm with all that, Joe. Again, don't don't claim to be technology savvy, but is it would it be difficult just to piggyback on what Joanne said, what Bill said, to have within the website? You have all these links on there. Just one area in the corner that says "weekly hot topic." They click on it instead of actually registering. It pulls up those notes that Bill was saying we're getting, you know, rootly that the customers and what uh, you know uh, Joanne was talking about that would be of interest to them. They click it, they see it, and then they move on. You could do it either way. Yeah, or both. Uh, yeah, both. yeah, yeah or, both, or both, because my thought is if you had something on there that's easy to identify and they do go to the websites, they click it, they get the information, and they can check that weekly or whatever to see what's going on because it is a lot of good information in there. And at one click, they read it, and they're done. They don't right. have to worry about going through emails or whatever the case you know, may the be. The only thing is we still have to look at those. To you, I still like to – I still am one of those, Steve, we have enough people in our communities that really don't check their emails all the time mm -hmm. and that are not into technology mm – -hmm. And I want them to get information. That's why I fought so hard to keep the in focus because it's, oh, it's mm -hmm. the only yeah. thing we have. Yeah. And I think when the, the topic first came up, we were thinking of the individual ones. And by doing just a uh, sign up for hot topics or something puts a little different spin on it. So thank yeah. you. And, you know, I, Mayor, I would, um, I, I also said the other day, I think, Three years ago, I would have been one of the first people to stand in line to say, we ought to cut the in-focus out and blah, blah, blah. Here I am four years later, but one of the other very positive things that that we heard in the last 12 weeks was the in-focus has been a great source of information, which kind of drives you to the point of, geez, maybe we should try to do it a little bit more often. And I know we've looked at that, and it's quite expensive, but... But the, the tool is obviously working, and it gets to the folks that don't spend a lot of time on the Internet and whatnot. And if, if, you're, if you're a crabby guy like I am, you don't want 10 emails coming from the city, one from parks and one from water. I want one that I can do a quick read and go on. And then to know if these other ones are available, I can go get them if I'm, if I'm really the parks guy or... No, no different than getting your news. If you're a sports person, you go to ESPN and you get your sports stuff. If you're a news junkie, you go to another source to get it, and and they can come in in many different forms. So I really appreciate the app, uh, the flexibility. Okay, all right. Well, I think we're done with this, and now um, I think we don't have to start it. We're already late, and so I'm going to ask you how long do you want to break before the next meeting? Ten minutes. Ten minutes. Is that enough? All right, this meeting's adjourned. Ten minutes before the next one. Uh,